Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Game Camp webinar. Uh, welcome to, to the next edition. Today's webinar will be focused on topics related to the data. So uh, we'll be focusing on how actually to grow a customizable uh, BI for, for mobile app and, uh, and, and mobile game. So uh, let's welcome our uh, amazing speakers. So let's, let's uh, welcome Thomas uh, Line Kugel. Hi. Who is the production director at Exint. Hello, Thomas. Hi. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you really for, for, for joining and uh, you know willingness to, to share the knowledge with the, with everyone in the uh, in the in the industry. Uh, and then let's 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 welcome uh, Krzysztof Zalasa as well, who is uh, a customer engineer at at, 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 at at Google. So hello, Krzysztof. Uh, hello, Marius. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I'm a customer engineer at Google, and I have a big pleasure to work uh, with gaming companies on their road to Google Cloud. Hello. Yes. So, uh, uh, of course, as always, uh, please feel free to to join discussion at uh, at Slido. So it's again, it's really unique opportunity to ask questions to uh, to Thomas, to uh, to Krzysiek, uh, uh, to me as well, and in general, ask all questions that in general are interesting in this you know data uh, area. So just go to the Slido and then at game camp as the name of the event and then you you'll be able to actually join the discussion and not spending more time on on that uh let's welcome uh, thomas who will talk about how actually you know his company and, and him were actually growing uh, bi for for mobile uh, game uh, and for for the uh, company based on um, firebase and different components that actually they were building on on that Thomas, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Thanks for attending. And it's an honor to uh, share a bit of actions knowledge today. Um, so let's get started. What is this presentation about? It's basically um, a journey, our transition at action uh, from third party to uh, first party data. And today we will explain why we did that, how and all the nice things that actually came along with that. Um, next, I would just like to start with a quick poll to uh, just have a quick idea on what is people awareness relative to first party data and in sourcing. Okay, well, this is going on. Um, let, let, let me start and introduce myself and accent. So, hi, I'm Thomas. Uh, I'm production director at Accent. Uh, I joined about four years ago, something like that. But otherwise, I've been uh, in the game industry for more than 20 years now. Uh, I've worked on some of the biggest AAA franchise and some indie productions as well. I'm a producer uh, with a technical background and I really loved and uh, the free to play and uh, that came with Cost Recon Online and now with all the projects I'm working on at Action with that proximity you have uh, with the player uh, when you are uh, acting in the free to play business model. Accent has been around for about 20 years, for more than 20 years as well. We have studios in the UK and Malta, and now our uh, company is above 50 uh, employees. Our philosophy is one action. So uh, we have one single uh, management layer uh, looking at all the studios at once. We adopted uh, hybrid working. And we are trying to be entirely uh, geo-agnostic. What does that mean is that basically we try to get the, uh, the members uh, uh, joining a project based on their motivation and their skill set rather than their country. Um, the, vision, the vision for Action, our business model is pretty simple. Developer and publisher who are doing mobile free-to-play games, mostly self-publishing. 
uh, and uh, we would do games with or without external IPs. Our internal vision is all about empowerment, transparency, uh, transferable knowledge. Uh, we try also to test things as soon as we can on the market, have quick iterations, but we still want to do very high quality games. And now our vision is in scaling up uh, our catalog. Today, uh, we are going uh, together through a journey. So get comfortable uh, and I will uh, give you some of the milestones we are going through. The first thing is with the next slide, I will close this introduction. And then after that, uh, I will talk about third parties because that's, that's where we started from uh, using those services, how that created our motivation uh, to get actually a first party solution and the pillars uh, we uh, took for them now a year and a half, a year and a half ago. Then uh, how we started with the first iteration, which was a first party BI, that was our proof of concept, our first vertical slides. Then uh, well, from there, the second iteration was to extend that as an enterprise solution. Um, the third step uh, was to make that a full scale internal product. Uh, I will uh, get into details there. And just before the conclusion, uh, we will talk about what made, really made the difference, uh, remote config. That was our game changer. So as, as I mentioned, this is a personal journey, uh, not a recipe uh, that may not be applicable for all the businesses, but maybe this is exactly what this is about, right? Is first party is doing what suits you best. To close uh, that introduction, um, so I, I just want uh, first to thank the team that is behind that. We have a team of data scientists and engineers uh, that help build uh, that solution. Uh, and and it, it, I mean, it's real, it's operational. We're already using that platform uh, for Lemmings and many other games. Um, and what would be the best outcome of that uh, presentation today is if we could meet more people that basically are following the same journey and would like to share uh, with us um, more about this and how uh, we can continue on that journey and, 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 and get the best out of uh, that kind of solutions. Okay, that was it for the introduction. Let's start now uh, and let's talk about third party. So for that, um, a bit of context, Accent. Accent, uh, as we mentioned, is more than 20 years old, started as a work for hire uh, developer. And then about 10 years ago, uh, transitioned towards more mobile work for hire developer. And we worked on some of really great uh, titles at the time. And about four years ago, um, Soon after uh, I joined, then really uh, kicked off the publishing side. And now two years ago, we got uh, Lemmings. That was uh, the top crossing game for, for us. And, and now we just soft launch Ultimate Sackboy, another uh, Sony license. And, and the future of, of action is really how, now, how we can grow from there, uh, develop and operate more games. If you are looking now this a bit closer at those games, um, you, you, you can see that there is a global uh, lack of consistency in what we were doing. And, and that's why we were exploring the, the free-to-play business model. We had independent teams working on games with or without license. Um, and then uh, we got it worked well and we got various level of success uh, over the past 10 years. The big difference came with Lemmings. Uh, so uh, Hard Lunch, December 2018, an action puzzle game, uh, a really great core gameplay, shipping worldwide, and then uh, coming with a full set of um, of free-to-play features. We had Gacha, we had seasonal content coming in, a, a, a tournament, and it worked well. Um, it's, it's, it became our model for success. We are developer and 
publisher on Lemmings and under a licensing deal with Sony. So we got uh, the best of both worlds. We had the market appeal, uh, and at the same time, we had a complete uh, creative freedom, and Sony was uh, really uh, trusting us on, on how we could adapt Lemmings to the, to the mobile market. In terms of revenue, that's worked also pretty well. We have a very balanced revenues, half and half between IAPs and ads. And when you're looking at the kind of players that we have, basically a third of our players are wells, uh, a third of our players are only, uh, the revenue are coming only from ads. And then we have another third of mixed uh, spenders, ad viewers. So, that was a success, but that was not the unicorn. Uh, Lemmings is a great game, but we knew we had potential for even a greater success. So we need to identify where we could improve. So we need to understand our players. So we needed data, a lot of data. We had so many questions. And at the beginning, third party data worked pretty well for us, but with time we had more and more complex questions and uh, we had it more and more third party services in Lemix. And when you look at the game from the back, then this looked a bit like that, a bunch of SDK that were included in the game and each of the services, they have their own storage, they have their own uh, logic on top of that, and then they are giving you their own dashboards. And that's true for all the services being internal or if you, with SDKs or external data that uh, we would consult. And after that, what do you have? You have people in-house that are looking at different dashboards, uh, then would extract this data, put that into spreadsheets, send that over email. And yeah, as, as mentioned, at the beginning, that was fine. But then came the time where of confusion and, and frustration with that. And that started with communication issues. Um, just the simple definition of day one would differ from one to the other. Is it the end of the first day, the end of the next day? On which time zone? Is it California time? Is it Central European time? Some even were using a 24 hour window after your first session. So that created issues in this communication. We, we lacked of consistency. Another uh, problem were, was coming from the data itself. So this mistake is entirely ours. No one to blame about this. Basically, um, we mixed for some currencies the sense with the unit. So when someone was buying something in this unit, actually he had a 100 times factor. And that's what your uh, graph looks like, a huge spike and the thing that you would like to look at completely dwarfed uh, at the bottom. And they, there was some uh, workarounds, but nothing simple. And, and also we had another issue with uh, how long the data would be retained. So basically we lacked of, of control and ownership of, over our own data. Next step, uh, time related issues. And, and if uh, you are doing some UA, you know how time is precious, how fast you want results. And, and then we would get those questions uh, very quickly. Is, do we have the data from yesterday? How is performing that campaign? And then also if we would like to go with um, bespoke requests, then it would take ages. Um, so here we lacked a free activity. Next was also sometimes uh, you need nuanced answers. And, and for example, you see here a drop in app DAO. Where does that come from? How do we know uh, why it happens? Is the, uh, is the app going wrong? or anything like that. And then when you have the data, you will see, yeah, hey, okay, there was that campaign that actually uh, brought us uh, a lot of uh, tier three uh, players. And then we, we understand when you have this data. So we lacked off granularity at the time. And that was too much frustration and, and confusion for us. This is not sustainable. 
we should build our own solution and we should have our very own live operation and we will call it autonomy. So that was when we kicked off autonomy. A year later, we're now in December 2019. And OK, we know what we don't want, what were our issues. So first, we would have to avoid that. But then we had to think about what do we really want to create. We had now, again, complete freedom to do whatever we wanted. So we came with those pillars. The first pillar was a single source of truth. Um, that was absolutely a major point that we could trust our data, that it would be consistent across everyone, because when we, we would take absolutely massive decision based on those data. Second, we wanted it to be granular. We want to go down up to the individuals. We want to go to be super precise. And finally, also long lasting. That's going to be the single piece of tech that will last the longest for us. It lasts longer than games, longer than engines, probably longer than services that we're using. So it was absolutely important that it was uh, stable. If you want something uh, to have that longevity, of course, you need it to be adaptable. And the first thing was, it has to be open. We wanted a toolbox rather than um, a from the shelf solution. The market is complex. It's changing all the time. We had to do that as well. Then it had to be scalable. Uh, it, it was there for projects and adding more and more games over their entire life cycle over time. So it had, it had to uh, be scalable and reactive. Um, as, as we mentioned in the beginning in our vision, we wanted this to be accessible to all fast responding uh, and, and close to real time data. And then the third pillar, master of our destiny, as, as we mentioned, were um, essentially self-publishing our own games. So we wanted this uh, to be uh, really imprinted in, in, in autonomy as well. Holistic means that, yeah, we, we want this solution to be able to, uh, to cover everything, all angles, all, all projects from beginning to end. And then universal, meaning that every single games that we would start from now on would have autonomy available on day one. And also, we could do that for the past ones. And finally, a business booster. It's autonomy at a sense if it had a measurable impact on our business. OK, so let's take now, let's do that step by step. First iteration, uh, we know what we wanted, but we would start with something slightly smaller and let's start with our own uh, BI solution, first party BI. And that's how autonomy started. A gaming cloud platform, the game, then we have, uh, we, we go on the cloud data warehouse. We get all the data that we can uh, gather in there, in sourced data uh, in our backend. And then we have our own logic on top of that, our own dashboards they will be uh, actually shared across uh, the live uh, operations team, the same for all of us. And that platform uh, will be uh, built on Google Cloud Platform and Firebase. So Action in the past uh, was using uh, already, uh, had already a platform based on another cloud provider. So why did we pick Google Cloud Platform? And the answer is pretty simple, Firebase. Firebase is the answer, and this for two reasons. Uh, the first one is it's offering unique services uh, that the others were not offering and that we were really keen to use. And also, uh, Firebase is proving Google's uh, deep understanding of the mobile uh, business. So we knew that basically they would continue uh, in that direction and we could trust them uh, on the long term. OK, so let's get started. You put one analyst, backend programmer, a client programmer. Uh, unfortunately, uh, none of them had any uh, previous experience uh, with Google Cloud. 
But that was a pretty serious team, a pretty senior team, sorry. Um, and then we spent six months on it. Within the first six months, that's what we get. Uh, our the Lemmings KPI dashboards, it gets everything uh, we needed at that point. So nothing uh, revolutionary in there. We have all the KPIs we need. You have all the filters that you want to use, different breakdown, and it's basically giving everything we were looking at externally and we were doing it better. We had that since day one. We had all the data. Everything is in one view. It's consistent. It's accessible to all staff through single sign-on. It's fast. It's inexpensive. And it was reliable. And major point, the granularity goes down to the individual player. OK, so I would say that alone would have been enough. Uh, we were already having compared to what we had. And if you look at the cost of the platform and the amount of time saved, it was already good enough. So everything I'm going to talk about from now on is bonus. And there is a lot. So um, another benefit of that is our ability to uh, process complex uh, indicators. The one that comes to everyone's mind is ROAS. So here, uh, we, we looked at different ROAS solutions, but none of them could go uh, at the level uh, of accuracy of, of ours, because here, we're able to include internal data. Every month, uh, our uh, employees are basically um, uh, filling up a spreadsheet and, and uh, with the, the, the time they spend on the different project on, on the different project that cost we can factor that in into the cost of the project then on the value side um, don't ask me why the other solutions we've seen were not adding that and then this is still something you would like to add it when you, you you look at the value and also, we mentioned that uh, this we made uh, a licensing deal, so we had we have a royalty rate, and this can be included as well. So when we're looking at our ROAS, it takes all of that into account. As a result, and uh, if 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 you are uh, dealing with with ROAS, you know that basically a one person difference in the early days of a campaign makes the difference between a successful or a failed campaign. And, and we were able to look at that very play, pr precisely. And also, we were able, uh, with the data going down to individuals, to investigate why uh, something would go uh, right or wrong. Overall, uh, all our significant UA campaigns have been profitable, thanks to that. All right, so we started. Let's have a look at those Peters. We started now. Uh, our uh, vertical slice proved already that we can have something granular that can be reactive and open. Nice. So now the next step is let's look if we can make it holistic. And that's how we extend our BI to a full enterprise solution. So we were gathering business intelligence, but the architecture is pretty generic, right? It's it's data warehouse. On top of that, you have microservices. Um, that's that's a generic backend. So let's add into that everything uh, that we could do uh, with this backend. And then we started with concept ideation, game dev, administration, live operations, more publishing features, all of that into the same solution. If we start with game events, for example, that's that's here we're really into the first party data. We can now look at where instead of when, and that changes quite a few things. Um, so we had also those dashboards, uh, a lot of them where we look at churn and all sorts of things. Um, I know they are not the prettiest, uh, but there is 26 pages of them. Thomas? And, yes? Uh, uh, can I ask you the question around that? Uh, uh, when you were uh, like when you were starting to develop uh, the uh, 
the system like you know you it includes like a lot of data that goes just beyond like you know regular growth or ua activities and like you know even like in analytics like you know uh, as, as i understand uh, it actually included a lot of cooperation with other teams as well yeah so how actually you you actually you know created the scope of the project and how to actually you created the requirements you just gathered the requirements from the teams or you just proposed it to them how did it go actually um, this, so uh, as we said, this was a lot of iteration internally. So we, we had the team and then we also had um, different um, uh, product owners around that. And, and that was really uh, an interactivity of what do you guys need? And, and then we would have our usual uh, production uh, roadmap meetings and, and then would pick basically the, priori the priorities and, 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 and develop whatever was needed at the time. So okay, so you created specific MVP and then you just uh, like ask for feedback and then you iterate based on that, as I understand. Yes. Yeah, a lot of that. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. No worries. Yeah, don't hesitate if you have questions. Sure. <laughs> I know I'm on the flow and. <laughs> no problem. Sure. Okay, great. So yeah, we we had all those dashboards and 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 let's let's take one of precise example with that. So Resurex uh, in Lemmings, it's it's a feature in the game, uh, which allows you when you fail a level to switch basically to some kind of god mode, and 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 then you 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 can finish the level. We observed the data, and then we've seen that basically during the first worlds, players were not. It, it's an IIP. People were not buying it. So. All right, so what can we do for that? And, and and then probably they don't see the value of it or it's too soon in the game. So actually we made a change. We said, okay, let's make it free. Then when they fail at the beginning, it's friendly. You can use this resurrect for free. And the result was absolutely amazing is if you look now at the revenue of the resurrect week one, uh, it's before and after that change, we, we, we increased our revenue on, on that IAP by 27%, basically. Other things, there are um, features that you want to develop only once. Um, here I'm thinking GDPR, terms and conditions, and all the legal uh, features that you need. And, and you do it once, and then it's there for all the next games. We don't have to do that again. And uh, also the good thing is like when le le legislation uh, changes, you just need to update the feature and all the games can benefit of that change. There are other features where you want to be pretty sure of what you are doing. Um, the example here is royalty reports. Um, you want everything cross-validated. We automated this. So now uh, we have we are confident in our royalty reports, and that's really something really important. And many other things that you can get out of that customer support. If the player shares with us his internal ID, then um, we can uh, we have access to his complete history, and then we can offer better support. The community feedback here we are also gathering external intelligence back in, and. Uh, this is, as an example, someday we shipped uh, a version of that and the the rating pop-up uh, was buggy. We just detected that in, in the next few days. We've seen a drop into the rating, the number of ratings. Immediately we could react, hotfix, shipping, and then back to normal. And also all sorts of marketing intels, like how many, how, how many times have we been features where that also helps us understand um what happens uh in the game okay so holistic we knew the value um here now we're touching everything we could touch uh, and it was time now to make it a product uh, that would last as long as the company so let's talk about the product first i would like to say we have no intention to make that uh a sell product, don't worry. This is not a sales pitch today. Uh, this is really about what we were doing. Um, 
But what we wanted is that internally it has the same level of quality and it would be able to uh, to be perfectly fine to um, serve our games and the company on the long run. For trust, the, the first thing was compare sources and automate uh, reports. Here we have dashboards basically that are comparing everything. Um, a couple examples. Um, if you're looking at the revenue, uh, we are basically looking at what we get from the clients and what we're getting uh, from uh, the different sources. Could be uh, the ad networks or the, ad, the store or anything. And then we compare. Is it, is it making sense? On, on ads, uh, we're precise almost to the cent. Uh, on, on the IIPs, we are basically, uh, we are having 1.5% uh, error margin. And we see, we know that, for example, on Android, uh, we underestimate our revenue um, on subscription by about 25%. It's, it's, it is what it is, basically. Subscriptions, renewal in particular, uh, they are happening in the back end, of, in their back end. We don't necessarily see all of that, so it's normal that it's not fully accurate. What is really important is that we know that, and we know by how much, we know by how much we underestimate that revenue. We do the same with installs based on all the UA networks and, and what uh, installs we really de detect. Now, other things quickly for scale, uh, we, dec we decided uh, to have sharded projects, uh, then to have uh, for the long lasting, we want a cross projects team, which means that's the same thing uh, that is working on all projects at once. Uh, and then for the universality uh, client SDK. So if we're looking at uh, now what the architecture look like, it's more like that. Autonomy SDK, embarking everything else. You can have different versions on different games. You can update the SDK on the game if you want to. You don't have to. Then all that data goes into uh, the Google Cloud Platform, so that's pretty scalable. Uh, on top of that, we have a consistent process layer. We are looking at the KPIs, the same ones for all our games, uh, more or less. We have a consistent logic. We have consistent dashboards on top of that, and we have a single team. So the knowledge from one project to another is following that. Also, post-launch, um, we want to operate this game for years after, uh, and, and the development uh, team is long gone on other projects. And now it's entirely uh, with the, the, the BizOps teams, with, with autonomy. And we wanted to continue to deliver new content to our players. So, we're also uh, using a server-side content delivery. For, to be honest, for historical reason, this content delivery service is, is on Amazon. But now all the events and all or everything that, that we get back is also going through Firebase and, and back in autonomy. Um, so yeah, we, we, we can now, even when the game is uh, in, uh, in live ops, uh, continue to deliver without a new build uh, seasonal content, new worlds, new levels. We can um, change the the store and uh, then make sales, make speci specific offers, uh, and and all that kind of of limited time offer things. And we can also do uh, special uh, special events. Uh, we are currently running uh, Lemming's thirtieth anniversary, but we're, we also have done in the past other events like Christmas, Halloween, Easter whatever uh, you want to do uh, with this. OK, so now, basically, we are good with all of that. We have our product. It's stable. It's delivering uh, lots of things. Now it's time to go to the last bit. How do we boost our business thanks to autonomy? And the game changer is a remote config. So I think we forgot to look at the result of the first poll, and, and it's probably time for the second one, though. And just to uh, have an idea of, of people awareness on, on the remote config. Well, 
or not. Okay, then I'm going to continue then. Remote config, what is it? Um, so, uh, sorry, good. Okay. All right, everyone has an idea, that's a good start. So remote config, basically, uh, then quickly, it's, you can define uh, in the back end, uh, you have your designers and, and they can define segments, um, rules, logic for segments, and we associate with that a config. Then when uh, the player uh, starts the game, it will go through Firebase remote config and say, okay, here I am that player, what is my config? And then uh, the, the logic would just say, okay, you are from that segment. So you get that config associated to that segment. The, the, the way that we implemented that into the game is that basically everything that is configurable in game, so namely XML files can be uh, uniquely of a written by a server side decision. So with that remote config, we can change very large part of the game behavior without a new build. And we can do that on an individual basis. And why is it so nice to have that through remote config? Because it applies close to real time and you can then iterate quickly. So if I can, Take an analogy. Um, think that you are learning guitar and uh, imagine that every time you pinch a string, it takes about two days before you can hear that sound. How fast are you going to uh, learn guitar compared to someone that is hearing it immediately? And then we applied uh, the remote config. Uh, the first thing was to do massive A-B test. We are a huge fan of A-B test with multiple variants. Um, and, and that allowed us uh, to do that. One, one example here is the FTUI. So we try different things, animated instruction instead of text, and then uh, we try different flows. Um, and and we, we, we made uh, probably uh, quite uh, more than a dozen uh, FTUI variants. Every time you take the best one, you look at new variants on this one, you do that again and you push that and you push that. And we found one, the one that basically was with the animated instructions and uh, with having all the FTUI levels in a row. So we, we, we don't, you don't go back to the main menu um, during the FTUI. That was the, the, the best one. And uh, looking at our uh, KPIs, it gave us basically uh, a 1.1% on, on the seven retention, uh, thanks to uh, that a uh, lot of FTUI A-B tests. But now let's go to the next step. How do you close the loop? If you get information from the player and then you can send back to that player an optimized experience that is specially uh, dedicated to him. And here, as, as, as a simple example, is imagine you have someone, early behavior, you can see that it doesn't look like he's going to be, he's, he's projected as a non-spender. We get that information. And when the player is uh, going to have one of the upsell pop-up, uh, we would then give him offers that are matching his profile. So uh, we would rather offering uh, reward ads or uh, using soft currencies and, and probably the, the cheapest IAP. On the other end, if someone looks like a good spender uh, and that can be built over time, then we would rather uh, offering uh, maybe the VIP or the uh, most expensive IAPs, but that are also the best value because we know that the player want the best at that level. And the thing is, this can be tailored and it can evolve with time. So 
one example here is AdMax. So it, it, we were really at, uh, at the very beginning with this. Um, we can control our ad placements, the rewards that we are giving, and the frequencies of those different ads. We have tested only two variants so far. So we have the control and one that is more heavy on ads. And, and we're currently building up on, on, on that thing. But just testing that gave us interesting results. Um, so if having that variant with more ads proves profitable in some countries, uh, so if you look at Russia, Thailand, Canada, or Italy, basically our revenue improved by 20% thanks to that. But on some other countries, it had the uh, opposite reaction uh, where we lost 10% revenue on that group in the UK, Germany, uh, Poland, and Australia. So from there, how do you get both of both words is we could define thanks to the segments in the back end. So now that we have analyzed that, we can look at that and say, OK, so now by default, if you are coming from those countries, your default first business model will be with ads. Or if you are coming from those countries, the default business model will be without those ads. And of course, this is something that you can change with time. If some player at some point becomes a spender, then we can change his business model and offering something that is uh, better and, and, and tailored for him again. So that's, that's all the great things. But there is even com more coming. It's here. Uh, we the we implemented some uh, deferred rewards and and that um, is allowing us to give to a specific player a specific reward uh, whenever he, he he starts the game. So that could come, for example, from friends referral. Oh, we've noticed that three of your friends actually played the game. Here is something for you, or you contacted customer support and actually yeah you were right so. Please get that item back, and, and 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 after that, even marketing gifts and to um, the marketing's mind. I don't know. Imagine here is like, oh, you saved the billion slamming. Here is a token of gratitude. We haven't planned for that uh, at the beginning, but we can add that. It's easily. So that's that's all the things we can get as well. Next step is the future. So if we're looking at the future, uh, we have the chance um, to be part of a Google Early Access program uh, and, and then now looking at machine learning. So all that loop is the same, but instead of us defining uh, the segments, uh, we give that to a machine and then we will see how that goes. So we're really at early stage on that. Uh, we have no results to share with this and, and, and we will um, test that by optimizing the interstitial frequency and see how that, that goes. So now, after 18 months, that's, that's the time it took us, we have basically ticked all the boxes uh, and, and, and really covered our pillars. And so we, have, we know that we have a solution that is adaptable that is automated and evolutive. We're happy with that. We also know that there is still a lot more uh, to explore. We have tons of ideas uh, that are there. We have a roadmap that is of incredible length. Um, and, and yes, basically everything that can be solved from a back end, you can do it with it. And, and that's exactly what's the beauty of that. So. If I can conclude now, um, and if you are still with me, um, let's 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 have a look of. Let's go back on on all that journey. So, we started. We were just originally motivated by frustration and confusion, and basically, uh, we wanted to do something else. And and we ended up with a never-ending uh, gift box. Um, it's. Autonomy now is a central piece for action. It's it's an accelerator of value for us, um, and 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 we know that everything that we are building now in autonomy is something that is going to come for free for all the the following games coming. So if I can give a piece of advice, maybe um, if you are interested into uh, going through in that journey, uh, first don't rush uh, into it. 
as I said, we started with third parties and, and that worked well for, for, for some time. Um, the decision to go to first party, it's, it's a cost. It's an investment, uh, an initial investment before you can make it work and also a long-term commitment. Uh, now we have a team and you need to keep that team, uh, that team uh, building, upgrading, uh, and maintaining uh, that, that backend. But as, as we said, short-term benefit very quickly, you, you will see that you, you can mimic the best around and you will just save so much time internally. Um, and then comes the long-term benefits after that. That's the second layer where you will see that this solution, this is your own and it will perfectly fit your business and having exactly what we need. And going back to Marius' question, it fits what we do because every time we're asking, what do we need the most now? And then we would develop that bit for us. And also, of course, uh, ending up with the remote config that really gave us the competitive edge uh, that, that we were looking for. As a last word, uh, I would say also that it also may be just the future. And, and when you look at how uh, Apple or Google are uh, going uh, forward with the uh, data privacy, sharing data is going to be more and more compromised and first party data is what you will have. And if we're going even down that road, um, meaning that our UA campaigns uh, might be less targeted than they were before, uh, then you are bringing in players that are more diverse. And it's really nice to know that your game can adapt and offer the best, uh, the uh, an optimized experience for every kind of player that you have. All right. Thank you very much uh, for listening. That was probably lengthy. Um, and I'm happy to uh, continue those conversations after um, if you want to contact me, LinkedIn or uh, on action.com uh, on, on my email, or if you are on the Gamecom Slack channel, uh, you can contact me there. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas, for for, for great, uh, uh, really, really good uh, uh, presentation. Thank you for like, you know, sharing so much details and uh, uh, the contact, uh, like the context of the whole, uh, uh, of the whole uh, topic. Uh, I think we can start with some, uh, like you know, uh, even questions from the uh, from the audience, uh, and then actually, you know, like me and Krzysztof will add our like our uh, our hours like uh, uh, as well. Yeah. So so like maybe the like from the first one, like the easy one, like you were mentioning like, like six months of development. Uh, was it like the content from like beginning to final, more or less final the system, or like more to the MVP? Like you know how. So six, six months is what it took to get uh, the dashboards. So the Lemmings dashboards that we've presented, uh, that's what took us six months. Mm -hmm. And everything else, um, and, and uh, so we, we had the Lemmings dashboards for KPI and the game events, basically, roughly. <laughs> that, that was what the six months were for. And then now that we have one more year of development, this is everything else that we, we discussed. Okay, okay. But but then after those six months, were you adding more resources to, to that project or like more or less it was like the same uh, or a similar number of people working on that? So it, it's, it, it's difficult because that's the same team developing it, maintaining it, mm -hmm. answering all the questions for the, for the projects and to, to everyone. So um, it, it grew a little, let's say, but the, mm -hmm. the, probably the amount of effort put into development was kind of constant. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Thomas, I'm also wondering uh, how your event design process works, because it's uh, often a challenge uh, uh, typically for uh, uh, companies who are, which are starting this journey, right? So you need to define which events uh, are, you know, interesting for you in order uh, to, to, you know, provide you valid answers for your KPI. How this event design process worked for, for you? Because it's Definitely something which is very interesting. So <laughs> then I'm really sorry, I'm probably not the best one to answer that question. Uh, that that was really more on 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 the the data scientist. Or we 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 had the chance to 
use several products before. So we, we already have an idea of, of, of the events we wanted. We also knew the one that were frustrating us. But after that, that's all the awesome work of, of our analysts to, to define and, and design the, all those events, to be honest. And, and uh, yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I can't go too much into details there. <laughs> sure. Sure. And, uh, uh, and like, you know, uh, maybe like, you know, that's uh, like probably like building on what like Shrek was, uh, was mentioning, like, you know, which teams were kind of in the, in, engaged in the, the like the production yes yeah? so, so it's like you know i understand like the people from the uh from the data science uh, but in but you are actually you know, put a lot of data even your really internal data including some processes so, uh, so i understand like you know way way more teams were engaged in the, in the, the whole process so i mean yeah th there is the input of course so, so the the Outside of, of the autonomy team, uh, there were there the um, we had that that spreadsheet I mentioned where people were using um, the, uh, uh, the 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 they, they are just filling up their time on different projects and this is just a spreadsheet and all of that is it, it's it's also uh, fully automated from there is the spreadsheet mm -hmm. automatically parsed uh, through our logic and, and then integrated. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, and maybe like the next one, like you know, uh, you you were talking a lot about uh, uh, remote config. Uh, are you differentiating that the offer is for different countries based on the remote config, or like you are just doing the based on the? Uh, uh, like based on uh, their uh, behavior, uh, and actually, so in this case, we have like you know two, two questions combined together. Yeah, so it's like you know how you segment those players, and then how you actually you know uh, adjust the offers to those segments. So um, I, I, as mentioned, this is a lot of working progress. So I, I, I can't even give you an answer today that would not be necessarily true tomorrow. But yeah, it, we start with the simple things, right? The country is something that's information that you have immediately so you mm -hmm. can start to have a, a business model based on that and after that as time goes uh, that's 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 the beauty of the remote config every time the player is starting a new session we can give him a new segment we, we, we can have assigned him to a new segment and then give him a new business model so yeah he starts with countries and then after that we will build up on on different business models uh depending on on then the very own player behavior mm -hmm. So like, like including you know what the approach to ads uh, include yes exactly the, 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 it's the number of ads the session lengths the what what he was interested in and and how he reacted eventually to our first offers um, all, all all of that can be uh, factored in thank you Yeah, so, so we see also some questions regarding uh, features. So, so do you feel that, uh, from my understanding, you are still uh, developing your system, you will, you especially uh, in terms of this machine learning capabilities. So what would you like to, let's say, um, achieve? Just segmentation by this machine learning, or you have uh, some plans which are, you know, far from just segmentation, you have uh, also some, some other ideas, if you can share, obviously. We, we have lots of ideas. <laughs> if there is something that we don't like of his ideas. Um, and and um, yeah, a, a lot of them. Uh, and, and yeah, I mentioned, for example, everything that is going to be social features in the future, um, which is a major uh, part of, 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 uh, the free, of the free to play business models as well, uh, is going to be added into that. Um, the what uh, we, we there is also a few legal other things uh, I can mention age consent. We would like to have something also that is centralized to uh, to manage that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's the it's it's really an agile approach that we try to have is we have a team working on that. We're developing so features, and and every time we get at the end of one, we're just looking at each other and what's next what what is the most important thing for us so sometimes it's really 
backend related. Now we need to improve our deployment system. Sometimes it's really player related. Uh, and 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 sometimes it's data related, and it's it's always a, a constant conversation. But yes, the, the idea is we continue to improve all the time. And uh, like you know, if if you were like you know, in this case, had the chance to think about, uh, okay, it doesn't make sense to rather do it in house, or maybe uh, we should more like rely on the you know third party tools, or maybe like someone uh, like you know. Uh, can build it for us like you know what what was kind of you know the most important like reason you in, in some way you decided to do it like you know internally in the way you did it actually so uh, i mean yeah we, we were back at, at the very at the very beginning and, and our pillars here um it's we wanted control on on our data that that was really the, the main motivation uh there um and 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 that freedom and that's that's why we were really thinking about a toolbox um and 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 then we can always adapt continue and 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 and, and yeah iterate from there uh and uh, like you know for for those uh uh, test with uh, with uh, remote config are you using Fireboy, Firebase audiences or you are like using any other way to do it? I think so. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I, I I can't I can't be positive on that one. <laughs> okay, okay, sure. Uh, and then actually there is last one around you know the. Like someone is mentioning that you know they uh, have the bug when uh, you know the like the only just fifty percent of users were sending some enough events. Did, did did you have any like you know problems where like you know some data was not sent in Firebase or anything like that in in your history? No, we had no issue like that and 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 that's that's also why we mentioned that we wanted to trust our data and we we basically we we, we double check everything so we we know how many people were attributed uh, through our ua campaign we know how many people uh, actually send us events uh through firebase and it, it, it was always pretty close so we we have not seen uh anything of that sort thank you Yep, it's also a question about you know details, and I, I'm not sure if it is. But but let's try. So so uh, I believe this data quality is a very valid question. So so you are doing this cross check, cross cross uh, check uh, um, uh, data coming from different sources, uh, and I have heard a lot of complaints that it differs. And uh, on your dashboards, on your screens, it looks uh, pretty accurate. And the question is how you define. Uh, it uh, for for instance when the, uh, there is a different definition of you know day one in one platform and second platform so how you uh, build this you know uh, quality check tool in order so to we, yeah yeah so to basically we 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 gathering data directly at, at we, we gather basically the raw data uh, out of the services so now we don't mine what is their definition of the one we have one that we're using internally that is consistent for everything so in that terms is we, we we don't we don't need to compare that with them what is important is the amount of that our year and and the cross check basically if there are discrepancies in the raw numbers and and um we deal with that uh, as we can so we have some of them that uh showed some errors on our side or on the provider uh, side that depended but um for example we learned to uh, start firebase extremely early uh, in the app uh, that helped a lot to uh, a lot to get the uh, some accuracy on, on on the number of installs for example um and 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 sometimes we just live with it is uh, as we mentioned for subscription we tried everything we could uh to uh, be as accurate as we could on on subscription but there is we were just wrong we know that it's but we know that we underestimate our revenue on subscription by 25 percent and 
at least we know by how much. So mm -hmm. this is this is what what is really important for us. Yeah. So so you you can calculate the the more or less uh, mm, good value. Yeah, uh, and we know that we on the value. So we're it's basically it's a good surprise at the end of the day. <laughs> Yeah, so, so definitely it's a it, it's a good sign. I'm also wondering uh, because uh, in one of, the, of your architecture slide there was uh, something that you have some kind of SDK built in in, in your app uh, in order to make it you know easy to uh, implement in your new uh, game. And yeah. I'm just wondering uh, if you have a chance to test this approach, uh, um, implement it in new game, and if it requires a lot of you know changes or it just works. Uh, just by dropping into a new game. <laughs> I, I, I would love to answer that it just works. That's that's right. That's what you hear every time about SDKs is <laughs> your game and it just works. Um, no, of course, there are difficulties and, and we're working on that. Um, the what, what really matters for us is that we have different boundaries of what is autonomy domain what is the game's domain, um, and and so it, it it's all about we we capitalize our, on our knowledge and 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 also the, the SDK approach. One of the main point is you don't have to retrofit that into the previous games if you don't want to. Otherwise, it's a pain. You know, some of the games don't worth it anymore. Um, yeah, sure. And, and then, like you know, there is like a question around you know the you know like does it work more like you know on the front end or like you know, it's easy it's using like the back end as well like you know maybe if you could like you know talk a little bit about that. It's both. Um, yes, uh, it's it's a mix of logic. So, um, and and as 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 we mentioned, it basically we have the logic in the game. And, and there is already configuration files in there. When when you you get the game, you you have a default behavior in there because you, not everyone is online at the beginning. And when you contact remote config, is eventually overwriting part of that. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's that's there is the back end logic that basically supersedes the front end logic if needed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you very much. Okay, I I I I see that in like the you know we you, you answer all questions from the audience. Thank you really much for that. Uh, and actually, you know, again, thank you, thank you uh, very very much for like you know for all the sharing to the to the uh, to the to, to the industry. Like you know, to everyone who is listening to 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 that. Like you know, feel free to contact Thomas. Uh, uh, as he mentioned, he would love to you know get in touch yes, with them, hope to, like you know, work on like you know similar challenges, uh, you know to exchange knowledge, to to you know to uh, to get to know uh, uh, more and actually you know, share share actually more as uh, as well. Uh, again, to everyone who is listening, thank you for your time. Uh, I really wish you you know really nice day uh, and uh, really good next week and nice summer as well, of course. Uh, we'll be sharing some uh, uh, webinars in the next uh, weeks as well. Uh, during the summer, of course, we'll have a little bit less uh, of those webinars than, than you know, previous weeks. Uh, but anyway, I really encourage you to uh, visit you know, gamecamp.io uh, website to check out the all future webinars. And again, thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Krzysiek, uh, for your time. And have a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much.